Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. My name is Risa and this is the Lulu Blue Studio. On this channel, we focus on painting mainly botanical subjects such as flowers in watercolor. All of the paintings on this channel are super simple, beginners friendly, and most importantly, they are super colorful. On today's tutorial, I've decided to bring you along the painting of three different flower compositions. We are going to paint all of them on the same page, and I want to show you how simple it is to actually create three very different flower compositions using the same type of flowers and the same type of colors. This is a super beginner-friendly tutorial and I really hope that this type of video will help you to create, to spark your imagination and uh, allow you to create similar flower compositions, maybe using different type of colors and different type of flowers. But let's stop talking and let's start painting. Are you ready? Let's start painting together! This whole tutorial is created using very simple supplies, a round brush in size 6 from Princeton and the colors I'm using for the flowers are mainly transparent orange, some kinacridon magenta and brilliant opera rose. I mix these three colors and I use my round brush in size 6 to start to create the petals of the first flower. I created the first hero flower of this uh, composition in the upper left part of the page, mixing these colors and making sure that all of the petals of these flowers are leading to the same center. The first layer of these flowers is quite light, and then while this first layer is still wet, I add with the tip of my brush some more concentrated pigment. Sometimes uh, I use a little bit more transparent orange, sometimes I use a little bit more kinacridon magenta or brilliant opera rose. I make sure that all of the petals of this first flower are leading to the center and therefore this uh, first flower has a round shape. In this tutorial all of the flowers that I'm going to paint are going to be the easiest and simplest way that you can paint flowers. That means creating petals in round shape and leaving the blank center that is going to be covered in a second moment with another color. When the first layer of this first flower has been created, I proceed to create another flower in the upper part of this composition, and I make sure that this second flower is a little bit smaller in size compared to the first one. This first composition comprehends, you will see by the end, three main flowers, of which the first one in the center is the biggest one, and then the other two are going to be in the upper and lower part of this composition, and they are a little bit smaller in size. To keep things very simple, we always mix the same colors, but we make sure that the percentages and the ratio of these colors are quite different, so we can create something very colorful, but also something not boring to look at. In order to do this, you can mix in some flowers a little bit more orange, while in other flowers you can, for example, mix a little bit more kinacridon magenta or brilliant opera rose. Of course, you can create these compositions with any color you have available on your color palette, but you can in general follow the general guidelines that I'm highlighting in this tutorial. For the leaves and for the stems, I've decided to use warm colors and in particular a mixture of burnt amber and yellow ochre. I really like how these brown colors are matching and uh, playing together with these warm pink and orange colors of the flowers, therefore I've decided to pick these colors for the leaves. But in your case, you can pick any other color. To create these leaves, I'm still using my round brush and I'm basically creating first the stem and then press and releasing the pressure starting from the belly of this round brush and then keeping the pressure until I create the typical shape of these leaves. 
to create a composition that is quite uh, nice to look at, quite vivid. I am creating leaves in different shapes and in different sizes. So the rules that I'm applying for the flowers are also valid for the leaves in the sense that as we have created flowers in first place with different sizes, I'm also remembering to create leaves in different sizes and shapes. I am taking a round brush from Silver Black Velvet, this is the finest brush that I have, and with the tip of this brush and the belly of this brush, I'm creating some smaller leaves in a dark color. In particular, I picked black because I really want these leaves to stand out from the whole composition. And uh, since this is quite a dark color, I've decided to create these leaves in a very small size. My tip for you when you are painting small, when you are creating such type of uh, compositions, is always to look at uh, the size of the flowers, the type of colors you have picked for your flowers, and then uh, try to find some balance with the colors of your leaves, and therefore also with the shapes and the sizes of the leaves that you decide to paint uh, together with your flowers. Painting small is such a great way to understand where to place the main flowers and where to place the secondary elements like leaves or other smaller flowers and how to balance different colors and how to place on the composition all of the different elements. So when you are quite happy with the amounts of elements in the first composition, we can proceed with the second one. To keep everything super simple, I'm using the same brush for the second composition, but also the same colors. And so I proceed creating the main flower in the second composition with uh, colors that are similar to the first one. So I'm mixing some transparent orange, kinacridon magenta and brilliant opera rose. In this case, I also start from the Hero Flower. This is my most important recommendation that I suggest you to follow if you are a beginner and you want to learn how to paint flower compositions. If you start painting your compositions from your Hero Flower, that usually is the biggest flower in the composition, you have taken basically most of the white space out of your page, you have creating, created your main flower and you understand better where to place your secondary flowers and filling flowers all around this hero flower. And so in this case, when the hero flower has been created, I started to create a secondary flower a little bit smaller in size in the upper part of the second composition. When you are creating simple flowers of this type, like in this tutorial, remember that you can always play with the white spaces and leave more or less white spaces into the petals or into the leaves in order to create something that you like more. For example, if you compare the first composition I've created compared to the second one, there are less white spaces in the first petals of the flowers. So you can see how you can obtain different results if you are playing with the white spaces and you decide to leave more or less white spaces. At this point, let's speak a little bit about leaves. Where do we need to place these leaves? My recommendation for you is to look at the composition you want to create and try to put the leaves where you want to give the flow to the composition. Personally, I like to give to these leaves some uh, orientation a little bit different, let's say, compared to the way the flowers are oriented. And therefore, I play with the shape of these leaves to give a little bit of movement to my whole composition. 
Also, since you are going mainly to create leaves in different sizes, remember that you can have some bigger leaves, for example, that are pointed towards, for example, the right side, and some smaller leaves that are pointed, for example, towards the left side. So in this way, like I am doing in this moment uh, in the tutorial, I have created a bigger leaf that is pointing the right lower corner of the page, and some smaller leaf in black color, that are pointing toward the left lower corner of the page. And so with this tutorial I really want to show you how you can be creative using similar elements in three different compositions and using also the similar type of colors and flowers and create different compositions overall using these elements in different ways. So placing your flowers in different positions but also your leaves in different ways and also giving accented brush strokes to different elements uh, in your compositions. For the third composition I also start from the hero flower and I'm going to place therefore all of the secondary flowers around this hero flower. I leave some white space in the center and I play with the white color of the paper underneath to create some petals that have some white areas into the petals. While the first layer is still wet, I'm adding with this round brush some concentrated amounts of Kinacridon Magenta and Brilliant Opera Rose to bring some pop of color, let's say, into these petals. I really encourage you to play with the wet on wet technique while you are creating your small compositions in this tutorial because you can really have no control on the blending effects of different colors but you can be really amazed by the beautiful effects that colors together blending on paper can really bring onto the composition. If you are a beginner and you really want to learn how to paint loose style flowers in watercolor, remember that you can always download for free the beginner's guide to watercolor flower painting, my 18 page ebook that I wrote for all of you where I explain techniques, supplies to use and I also show you how to paint simple flowers. You can download the ebook by subscribing to my newsletter by clicking on the link in the description down below. Back to our painting, on this third flower composition I am playing with the light colors of brown to create the first leaves all around these flowers that I have created in the lower left corner of the page. I first created some leaves using the yellow ochre color and now I'm adding some contrasting brush strokes adding few, a few leaves in burnt amber. Some of these leaves are really touching the lighter yellow ochre and therefore some of the dark brown is really blending into the yellow ochre of the first leaves I've created. I'm basically playing with the techniques that watercolor allows me to enjoy and it is really nice which type of effects I can notice happening on the paper. And so at this point, after I have created the main flower, the hero flower and the secondary flowers, I'm adding leaves that are sort of framing the flowers I've already painted and these leaves are pointed towards different directions in order to give a little bit of movement to the whole composition. So the flowers uh, take the main and central part of this composition, but then some leaves uh, bigger in size uh, are pointed towards the right side, while other uh, leaves, maybe smaller in size or with different colors, are uh, pointed towards the left uh, corner. So look at the composition as a whole and play with your leaves, as I said before, with the shape of your leaves, but also with the size of your leaves, and remember to point these leaves uh, towards different directions. 
I like to create these darker leaves in black color with this small brush because this color it's black and therefore it's a very dark color that is going to really pop compared to all the bright colors that I use to create especially the flowers and therefore I'm using a small brush because I want this dark leaves to be not too heavy on this whole composition and so quite small in size. And now it's time to create the center of these flowers. I recommend you to create the center of the flowers based on the final effect you want to achieve. In my case, I really didn't want the center to blend completely into the petals that I've created. And therefore I'm creating the center when the first layer of the petals is completely dry. I'm using some Mars black, so the same black that I used to create the small leaves, in order to create a sort of connection between the flowers and the leaves of the composition. In this way, I'm also limiting my color palette, which I like it very much because it will not create a type of composition that is too chaotic. So if you are a beginner, another recommendation that I would like to give you is to limit your color palette in the sense that you can pick just a few colors and then mix them on the paper or on your palette to create different blends of colors, but always using maybe two to three to max four colors, for example, for your flowers and just a few colors also for your leaves. Another recommendation that I would like to give you is when you are creating the center of your flowers, like in this case, I am leaving some white spaces into the center in order to still have the white of the paper that is popping from the background, let's say, and is bringing a little bit more light into the flowers. So if you're a beginner, remember that you can create the same elements, even for example for the center, in very different ways. For example, you can create a center leaving some white spaces, but also for example not leaving any space, or not creating any dot around the center. You can practice a different uh, small composition of this type and really try to, to understand what is the style of different elements that you really like to play with. I am creating the center of these flowers with this uh, small brush in size 6 that is uh, very soft and allows me to have a little bit less control also on the creation of the center of these flowers. And then with this same brush, I'm also creating a little bit of layers into the petals of these flowers. I am basically using the same colors that I've used to create the base of the petals. So sometimes I'm using a little bit more concentrated transparent orange, while other times Kinacridon magenta or Brilliant Opera Rose. While I'm using these colors, I'm also using either the tip of this brush or the belly of this brush and adding more or less pressure into the belly and the tip of this brush, I'm creating some fine lines that are mainly highlighting the shape of these petals. I am basically adding layers onto the petals of these flowers to give a little bit more definition to these petals and to these flowers overall. This is a technique that I really like to play with and I very often use this round brush from Silverback Velvet because this is a brush that has the finest tip among all of the brushes I own and therefore allows me to really obtain these fine lines into my petals. If you like to create uh, details in the same way, you can create these details of this type also onto the leaves, please go ahead and follow this tutorial. But remember also that if you like to just have flowers where the wet on wet technique is the predominant technique that you want to play with, you can also skip this part and you can obtain beautiful flowers also without having layers onto the florals or onto the leaves. I really think that adding this type of layers onto the petals really brings these flowers to pop. 
And so we are arriving at the end of this tutorial. I really just wanted to highlight how painting small can really accelerate the learning experience for you if you are a beginner. So keep watching the Lulu Blue Studio because I plan to create other tutorials in this style. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.